missile crisis. The White House now denying any imminent threat, but tonight the risks rising. Ukrainians celebrating the incident, but Ukraine not claiming responsibility. An advisor to President Zelensky writing on Twitter that this is just the beginning. Everything stolen must be returned to Ukraine. And Russia appointing a new general known for his brutal tactics in Syria. On the streets of Moscow today, most we spoke to reluctant to talk. How do you feel about President Putin now? Uh, sorry, I'm out of politics. How do you feel about President Putin now? Uh, I think I can't actually answer you the question. You don't want sorry. to answer that question. Here in Moscow tonight, President Putin is yet to comment on seeing his prized bridge on fire. President Biden had openly wondered about an off-ramp for Putin in Ukraine. Tonight, the conflict is only ramping up. Jose? Kier Simmons in Moscow, thank you. Another twist in football star Herschel Walker's campaign for the Senate in Georgia. We're learning about conversations over text message between his wife and the woman who told other news outlets he paid for her abortion. Ali Rafa is in Georgia with what those texts reveal. The latest accusation against Republican Herschel Walker coming from text messages he shared with NBC News. In them, the same woman who told other news outlets he pressured her to have an abortion in 2009 says he suggested she terminate another pregnancy years later, but she refused. Did you know Herschel paid for my abortion the first time, she wrote to Walker's wife, or that he told me it wasn't the right time to have their now 10-year-old child? NBC News is withholding the woman and her son's name. The texts were initiated by Walker's wife, Julie Walker, who couldn't be reached for comment. This here, the abortion thing is false. It's a lie. Walker has denied he pressured her to have an abortion and that he paid for her abortion in 2009 after she provided the Daily Beast and later the New York Times proof of money she says he had given her for the procedure. NBC News has not independently confirmed that reporting. The former football great who's running on a staunch anti-abortion platform telling NBC News those text messages were the first time she ever mentioned the abortion to him or his wife. The latest bombshell comes in the final stretch to election day. Walker up against incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock. While most Republicans are standing by Walker, Herschel Walker is going to win that race. Some state Republicans are voicing outrage. Yeah, I mean, everybody knew that there was baggage out there, and certainly this is the process. Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, who's not running for re-election, says the GOP is running flawed candidates like Walker in Senate races they should be able to easily win. I think this is part of the Donald Trump hangover. This is a horrible place for us to be, not just here in Georgia, but in other parts of the country. This should be a layup for us in the House and the Senate, and we should be tracking in 2024. And Ali joins us from Atlanta. Ali, how is this playing with voters there? Jose, Republicans tell me they don't think this will make any big waves in this race, while Democrats call this proof that Walker is unfit for office. Jose. Ali Rafa in Atlanta, thank you. We are hearing from one of the survivors of that deadly stabbing spree on the Las Vegas Strip this week. The showgirl speaking to us from her hospital bed. And in another twist, the alleged assailant had spoken out to media just days before the attack. Here's Maura Barrett. Tonight, survivors from the bloody attack on the Las Vegas Strip fighting for their lives. <laughs> the scene on repeat through their minds. Definitely feeling very blessed. Really feeling a lot of survivor's guilt. Vegas showgirl Anna Westby spoke with NBC News from her hospital bed, where she's being treated for a punctured lung. She described the chilling moment Thursday when a man asked for a photo with her co-worker, Maris Marine Di Giovanni, before pulling out a large kitchen knife. He grabbed the knife and he stabbed her directly in the heart. And he got up to me and stabbed me in the back. Tell me a little bit more about what Maris was like. She was someone that could literally make any situation better and always there to remind you how blessed we are to have each day. Di Giovanni and another man were both killed in the random attack. Six others injured, like Westby, who has started a GoFundMe to cover her own medical bills and funeral costs for her friend. Mi nombre es Yoni Cristian Barrios López, 32 años de edad. And we are learning more tonight about the suspect, Yoni Barrios. Just days before the attack, he approached our Telemundo partners in L.A., saying he was from Guatemala, feared for his life, and was homeless. He was in court for the first time Friday. 
Berrios will be back in court next week to face murder charges. Maura Barrett, NBC News. In Florida today, nearly two weeks after Hurricane Ian hit, some homeowners were finally able to return to their houses to see what was still standing. Kathy Park was with some of those families as they made the painful journey home. For the first time, anxious homeowners who survived Hurricane Ian shuttled in by bus to Fort Myers Beach, the only way residents can get onto the barrier island because of the widespread damage. Jerry Artrip went in knowing there would be devastation, but he wasn't prepared to find his home flattened and scattered in pieces. My house is gone, as I didn't know what to think. I spent 22 good years here, and it was tough. A lot of memories. A lot of good memories. I've had a lot of good time here. What's kind of the plan today? Do you have one? I don't have one. This is Acero Boulevard, and this is the main drag here on Fort Myers Beach. You can barely make out the road because it's literally coated in sand. It, it looks like a ghost town here. And what struck us coming into this community is just how eerily quiet it is right now. Emergency responders are keeping a close watch with hazards at nearly every turn. The island was covered in 12 to 18 feet of salt water from the storm surge. The structural integrity of many homes and buildings is compromised. Thousands in the disaster zone are still without power, and in hard-hit Fort Myers Beach, there's no running water. Residents who made it in left with items they could carry back on the bus. Do you plan on rebuilding? I hope so. I really hope so. I like this little island. And Kathy joins us now from Fort Myers Beach. Kathy, when will the island be back open? Jose, there was limited access onto the island until 5 o'clock this evening, but starting tomorrow at 7, residents, property owners, and businesses, business owners are actually allowed in, but it really depends on where your property is located. It'll be a staggered re-entry, and officials are saying all the structures on this island are unsafe, so enter at your own risk. Jose? Kathy Park in Fort Myers Beach, thank you. Still ahead tonight, the first major cold snap of the season, just as home heating prices spike how you can lower your bills. We're back now, and so is the cold weather. Tens of millions of Americans under freeze and frost warnings today as winter weather returns to the Northeast and Midwest, just as heating costs are skyrocketing. Here's Priscilla Thompson on the very expensive winter ahead for many. Fall is in full effect, but some parts of the country are looking more like this. Michigan getting its first snowfall of the season. Tonight, 50 million Americans are under frost warnings from Colorado to Maine, including in New Jersey, where Shannon Phillips Hunt lives. This is gas, right? So that how much does it cost you to run it? So our bill can get up to like over 120 in the winter time. As temperatures plummet, heating costs continue to skyrocket. Customers in New Jersey could see bills go up 25% after officials approved a rate hike earlier this month. Phillips Hunt is looking for a second job to help cover the higher costs. I'm super worried. Last year, our bill was up over $300 in the very cold part of the year, and I'm anticipating it to be higher than that this year. Can you afford that? Well, we're going to have to. Nationally, the cost of home heating is expected to jump 17% this year, costing about $177 more on average, the most expensive it's been in more than a decade. What's behind this increase? It was a very hot summer, so electric companies drew down supplies of natural gas. Then on top of that, the OPEC countries have decided to reduce supply. An unusually cold fall could draw down the supply even more, with more potential rate hikes before winter's even begun. Experts say to help cut costs, repair or replace old furnaces, reseal all doors and windows, and even before you get a high bill, see if you qualify for state-run assistance programs that can help you cover the higher costs. We're going to have to just continue to do what we can to get by. Priscilla Thompson, NBC News, New Jersey. We're back in a moment with the overseas scam artist revealing how he ripped off Americans online. We've all received those texts or emails from criminals trying to rope us into some sort of scam. And we know that many of them originate overseas, especially from the West African country of Nigeria. Why do so many there turn to online crime? 
Now a former scam artist there is speaking out to our Jacob Ward about how and why he did it. In this city in southwest Nigeria, everyone seems to know someone who scams Americans online. The culture of scamming people, and that culture I think is in Nigeria, yes. And they say it is simply because there are no other jobs. When you've tried good, it doesn't work. You have to turn to evil. Chris, that's the name he gave us, says that was his situation. I have three elder siblings, and none of them has a job. For five years, he approached American women online. Mostly midnight. Sometimes I, I sleep by 5 a.m. So you'd stay up all night doing this? Yeah, all night, and I have to go to class by 7 a.m. Finally, he convinced a woman from Texas that they were in love. I spend a lot of time talking to her. She, she, she wants attention. People in America want attention. I don't consider myself stupid, but they got me. Laura Francis was 68 when another scammer, later traced to Nigeria, found her. He would send beautiful sayings every morning. Good morning, sweetheart. So happy that I met you. But it was this question that did the trick. Don't you think you're worthy of being loved? Mm -hmm. You know, and my, that's kind of a question I hadn't thought about. Then the scammer began inventing financial emergencies. How much did you end up losing? $248,800. I am so sorry. I'm going to survive. Um, I'm just not going to be able to do what I had planned on doing. For victims, the lesson is clear. Your alarm bell should be ringing when these new relationships, whether romantic or otherwise, start asking you for your hard-earned dollars. Chris got only $20,000 out of his victim, but that is 10 years' salary in a country where more than half of the population lives in extreme poverty. Chris says he was so remorseful he confessed to his victim. She cried for days, but to my surprise, she did not block me. She adopted me like a son. And today, he consults with an American company, Social Catfish, to spot future scams. For Laura, the experience taught her about evil, she says, but also about poverty. And they need to find jobs for these guys, and they need to give them a better way of life. Until then, millions of young men like Chris have no better option than to look for the lonely online. Jake Ward, NBC News, San Francisco. When we come back, the story of a young man defying the odds, inspiring the crowd, and finding the end zone. There's good news tonight about victories on and off the field, and a young man who wasn't expected to survive reaching his dream of playing football. At William Fleming High School in Roanoke, Virginia, Something special happened on the football field last month. The players and coaches took teamwork to a whole new level by including 17-year-old Tyree Tasco, a senior with lifelong health challenges who always dreamed of scoring a touchdown. This is tackle somebody. There he is, number 21. You can see and hear players from both teams cheering him on and helping guide him towards the end zone before the big celebration. The moment, a milestone for Tyree's mom, Carolyn. She adopted him and says he was so ill, doctors feared he might not make it. Tyree is such a, an, a really an inspiration. I got Tyree at nine months of age. And the night that I got him, they said, oh, you probably wouldn't live through the night. They had diagnosed him then, failure to thrive. It seemed like every three days we were going to somebody's doctor's appointment. And I just never gave up. Carolyn's faith, a bedrock of that determination. He is a miracle yeah. child. Yes. She also credits the team for their compassion. Did you get your dance? Did you get your dance? Colonel's coach, Jamar Lovelace, helped set up the big surprise. This is a young man who has faced so much adversity and yet is focused on the future and there's really nothing that he cannot do. He's been defying the odds his whole life. What was so important for us and our players uh, was to give him an opportunity to do something that is kind of his lifelong dream. That game inspiring Tyree's teammates, Jalen Robinson and Kaya Nesbitt too. What was it like to see Tyree do that? It was a very special moment just to see him, how excited he was. I'm gonna remember that moment for the rest of my life. One team setting an example about 
what winning really means. I think that big message is that, uh, you know, someone may not look like you, uh, may have different struggles than you, um, but, but, you know, dreams can come true for everybody. And we just found out Tyree was honored last night at the game as senior class king. Big congrats to him. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. I'm Jose diaz Boer. Thank you for the privilege of your time. And good night. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News.